Welcome to the program. In today's particular program, I want to discuss leasing reporting for landlord clients in property management and or leasing. The idea here is that you can be very detailed to help the client understand the leasing trends when it comes to the vacancies in their property market with their property. You'll get some tips here to formulate your monthly report to the landlord about what's going on and how they can adjust to get tenants interested in their vacancies as soon as possible. So grab a coffee, grab your notebook, come back and listen to the program, and I'll also put a link to the particular article at the website that you can go to and print as a record of detail for you to refer to whenever you need it. There's about seven points in this particular program which formulate a leasing report as part of a property management report. That's what I want you to have and use So print the article from the website. Let's get on with the program and I'll catch you at the other end. So I just want to talk about the landlord reporting process when it comes to leasing and property management. The landlords who own investment property today are likely to face some challenges with vacant premises and tenancy movements. That is where the skills of a specialised leasing agent and or property manager are so valuable. Every landlord that you act for should be helped to understand the local property market and its challenges. Now your monthly reporting process as part of property management can do that very well. In the days of generic marketing of vacant premises, those days are well gone. Every lease vacancy requires a specific effort a specific report, and specific strategies. And for that, you should obtain an exclusive listing for a reasonable period of time that is in property management and or leasing. So, updating the landlords about leasing. How do you do that now? Think about your property management activities. How do you actually update the landlord about their leasing requirements, their vacancies in their property? That's a key question. I am suggesting that you update your property management report monthly to include a comprehensive leasing narrative. So every landlord you act for in an exclusive listing should receive a regular market update from you that gives them a comprehensive report of the existing inquiries and leasing trends within the vacancies within their property. So here are some ideas to help you with that. Number one, the facts. That is recent lease activity in the local area for the property type, for the precinct, will always be vital so you can stay up to date of market trends and leasing transaction terms and items. The landlord can then hear from you about what's going on with those market rents and leasing transaction terms. Your landlord should not be the last vacancy in town. The property should not be the last vacancy in town. It should be leased faster. Help them market more effectively than the competing properties. Do more with their vacancy and, of course, give them the narrative of what's going on in the market at this time. That forms a key part of your property management report as a leasing update. Number two, promotions. The landlord will always need to know about recent marketing efforts and results. You can assess the different leasing marketing tools, of course, that are bringing in more inquiries. And of course, that always changes because of the online tools, etc. Focus on what works when it comes to vacancies, not what doesn't. Get away from generic marketing. Do specific things with your lease vacancies. Give the landlord specific marketing strategies that you know work when it comes to leasing, shops, premises, vacancies, anywhere. Marketing commercial real estate today is a strategy requiring careful consideration and adjustment. That is all about property promotion to get the inquiry in. 
If you're not getting the inquiry in, you're wasting money. Number three, inquiry. Where the inquiry is coming from today and what the inquiry is looking for will help you match the property and the landlord to the prospective tenants. So tell the landlord what's going on with that inquiry and how, of course, they can tune their lease offering to get more inquiry to get the vacancy filled. It's not what happens initially with the lease deal. It's what happens with the lease deal over time. So the starting rent is not so critical, but the value of the rent over time is critical. The net present value of the lease deal over the three, four, five years, whatever it is, is the number you should be looking at, not the starting rent. Number four, attracting tenants. The types of lease incentives offered to tenants in today's property market and the competing rents will impact your client, the landlord, and their property. Keep the client well informed on market rental trends as well as the incentives. Of course, the incentives will vary from time to time. They could be cash, it could be rent-free, it could be a fit-out. It can be many different things. The incentives exist to get the premises leased. As a property manager or leasing expert, your job is to advise the landlord on what incentives can pull in the right types of tenants in the target audience to that property and the vacancy. Number five, communicating. Tenant meetings and strategies should be documented if you are meeting with those tenants on behalf of your client, the landlord. In a complex property, giving the landlord full tenant briefings at least monthly is necessary. So every tenant meeting that you have should be supported by notes and feedback. Tell the landlord what the tenant is thinking, how their business is going, where the option may be in the lease expiry dates, and how you're going to handle rent reviews or rental increases, etc. It's all about communicating. Number six, empty premises. Vacancy marketing plans should be coupled with tenant retention plans in the subject property for the landlord. Now that tenant retention plan should be in the business plan for the asset. There should be a business plan for the asset before the start of every financial year. Now that tenant retention plan and the vacancy marketing plan can form part of a strategic approach to solving vacancies quickly. Plan every tenant movement, retention, negotiation and lease well in advance. Number seven, local developments. Now when you think about a property in its location and the property type, new developments, property developments that is, will come and go from the local area. Unfortunately, they can pressure existing properties through market rents, incentives and lease terms because the developers simply need to get those developments leased. So they're going to be aggressive when it comes to their asking rents and incentives. So your existing landlords in the location with similar property types will suffer when it comes to leasing pressure. So what do you do? You stay ahead of the local property vacancies and the updates from the property planning office. Keep an eye at the planning office on what is happening when it comes to new local property developments that are yet to be started and those that are underway. Because the incoming space, the incoming lease vacancies will affect the property and bias the property in some way that you need to be careful about. So what have I done here? I've explained seven particular issues for you to report on when it comes to your landlord reports in property management and leasing. Just to recap, number one, the facts of the market and the property. Number two, the promotional strategy and the target audience. Number three, the inquiry results that are coming in. Number four, attracting the right sort of tenants to the asset. Number five, communicating about the tenant connections and the discussions and meetings. Number six, the empty premises report, that is the vacancy strategy. Number seven, local developments. So as the leasing expert for the area and or the property manager, 
you can merge this sort of report and this type of detail into your property management report each month to the landlord. That then helps the landlord understand exactly what's going on out there and it helps you when it comes to, let's say, crunching the market rental numbers when you need to get a tenancy deal across the line. A landlord who gets this information from you will be able to understand the true market conditions, which help them with leasing strategies and decisions. So what's the key message here? Get closer to your landlord and help them with all the vacancy issues by providing detailed leasing reports in your property management report each month. Are you the leasing expert, the property manager that the landlord needs? Of course you are. Make sure you are conditioning them and updating them with the market trends about leasing in their property. And so this is the program today. You've got some ideas there for you to think about when it comes to landlord reporting in regards leasing and the vacancies in their assets. Do more with your property management reports and leasing reports to keep your landlords fully up to date with the leasing trends. Of course, the market's changing. That's going on all the time. As agents, property management specialists, sales or leasing agents, whatever we are, we have to adjust to the right trends and give the landlords that we serve detailed reports. That's what this program's all about. Don't forget to visit the article at the website, print it off and keep it. Thanks for listening today. I'll catch you again very soon.